I want to begin by um, talking about somebody else that wasn't involved in the riot a few weeks ago. I don't think a lot of people realize why our detention center is called the Alvin S. Glenn Detention Center. I don't, people don't realize that 21 years ago on September 17th, that Alvin S. Glenn was a detention center officer at the Richland County Jail at that point, and he was viciously murdered that night on a Sunday night um, by inmates who had planned an escape. So. You know, our detention center is called Alvin S. Glenn Detention Center for a reason, because that was one of our correctional officers who was killed in the line of duty. And I think people just don't realize that. They just don't understand what that name, where that name came from. It was called someone lost their life in that detention center, someone that was doing their job, um, someone who cared about Richland County, cared about making sure he was doing the right thing, and he was working that night, and, and, and he was killed. Um, so that's why it's called the Alvin S. Glenn Detention Center, and that's his picture behind me. I want people to remember him. I want people not to forget uh, this face behind me and also his name. So when they hear a story about somebody's in the Alvin S. Glenn Detention Center, they realize what it's about, that it was someone's, someone's loved one that lost his li life in the line of duty. And that could have happened on September 3rd, a few weeks ago, when we had numerous inmates that attacked two of the correctional officers that were working in one of the pods. 54 inmates was in that pod. They were locked up in their cells. Um, they were supposed to be restricted to their cells. They were locked in there. They were upset because they weren't getting as much recreation time as they thought they deserved. Excuse me, but I didn't know that they that they had a say-so on how much recreation time that they got. Um, these aren't choir boys. These are people in there for murder, kidnapping, robbery, burglary, probably some of the worst crimes you can imagine, and they're in there for a reason. And to me, that they gave up that right to demand what kind of recreation time, but that's what they were upset about, is they didn't want to be in their cells and they wanted recreation time. So one of them, Jimmy, to lock on the door, was able to open the door. Then he was able to get somebody else out. And then they cowardly attacked two of the correctional officers that were working. We're going to show you a video. Um, and we've blocked out the faces of the two correctional officers. They don't need to be uh, publicly identified. Uh, but I want you to see the cowardly attack, the riot that occurred on September the 3rd. Two correctional officers. One inmate just got now. Here comes the rest of them. See one grab a trash can already. They've got a mattress. They're trying to hide their identity. Now all of them are supposed to be locked up in their cells. There's the first attack with a chair. One correctional officer on the ground, the other one's up against the wall. And you can see the mob attack that they did. I can't imagine how scared these two correctional officers were that were subjected to that, uh, the cowardly attacks on this mob of murderers, robbers, kidnappers, and how they just attacked these two correctional officers who were in there doing their job. Correctional officers don't get a lot of credit. They don't get a lot of things said about them positive. You know, we lock people up. You know, we get the credit for it, but they, somebody has to take care of them. You know, our detention center officers, our correctional officers, and our prisons, they deserve a pat on the back for the job that they do. They have a very difficult job. As you can see, these two correctional officers were locked in that pod in that cell block, just like the, the inmates were, right there with them. And you saw what had happened. We arrested um, two of them that day, Juwan Council and Anthony Blakely was arrested that day, but since then we've identified 10 more. 
So we have a total of 12 people that we've charged. Uh, we've charged the one who initially opened the door and then opened the door for someone else who went down to the computer and opened up all the cells and let everybody out. As you see, not everybody of the 54 inmates participated in the, in the riot and the, the attack. We've identified those that did participate in it. They've all been charged. They've been charged appropriately. Um, you're getting a list of their names and their, we're going to show their fic pictures back here. But I think what is significant also is, is what they're in there for. Murder, armed robbery, domestic violence first degree, carjacking, great bodily injury, armed robbery, multiple counts kidnapping, armed robbery, carjacking, kidnapping, armed robbery, two counts of murder, burglary, kidnapping, burglary, attempted murder, armed robbery, three counts of assault, it just, it just goes on and on and on on what they're in there for. You know, not everybody deserves to be in jail that's got arrested. Some people can be released back out on bond. Some of them can't. Some of them need to be confined to protect the public. And every one of those that we've charged fall in that category. Um, they want recreation time. They don't deserve it. They deserve to be locked up. That's where they need to be. But uh, we applaud the detention center officers at Alvin S. Glenn Detention Center for the job that they do. Um, we responded very quickly and was able to stop anything else from happening. Again, when we got there with our, our numbers and the force that we showed, it stopped it. But you saw what happened before we got there. So they're going to be, we're going to continue to investigate it. If we identify any additional ones that were involved, they're going to be charged appropriately too. So again, I want everybody to remember Alvin S. Glenn who he was and what he was doing and why that detention center is named for him. Questions? How are the two officers doing? Physically and emotionally, it's two different things. Um, I think physically they're probably doing pretty good. Emotionally and mentally, uh, it's tough. Just imagine, you, you saw part of it. That, that was only a part of what actually happened to them. Um, so um, they're getting help and that they're going to need some help for some time being. You said one of the inmates was able to open the door and let other inmates out. Can you kind of elaborate on that, explain that a little bit? One was able to jimmy the door and was able to open his cell door. He then opened the cell door of someone else. Uh, they went to the com command center that you saw where the two correctional officers before they got there and was able to go on the computer and open the rest of the cells. Um, you know, they just, they know how to do it and they did it. At last press conference, you mentioned they found one weapon. It was kind of like a makeshift knife. Was that the only weapon that was used? And kind of how was it obtained or kind of made, I guess? That shank, for better words, what it called. I think we found one more. That was not used in the attack. What was used in the attack, you saw a trash can. You saw chairs. Um, you saw mattresses. You saw feet. You saw fist. Um, everything that could cause some serious injuries. And, and, and they did. All right, thank y'all. No, they da the the video cuts off. They damaged the video um, after they did their attack. Um, so there was some damages. They damaged the computer. They damaged all the stuff that was in there. So I, I don't have a price figure on it. Just a quick clarification. Uh, so there's going to be 12 people charged in total. We're charging 10 more today. Uh, we've had two charged that first day, and over the last few weeks, we've charged 10 more. Okay. And were the corrections officer, we did their sex, were they both male? One was a male, one was a female. Okay. Uh, the county administrators talked about using some of uh, the COVID relief money for maybe some security upgrades at the jail or some improvements. Are you, are you working with him on that? Um, is that being discussed, or what's, what's y'all's role, if any? Yeah, we are um, working with them, coordinating some stuff and trying to help them out. Um, some management and also some technical stuff that we're providing to them. We, we want to try them. You know, they're our brothers and sisters. They're in this criminal justice system, you know, just like we are. So we want to help them out. And they, they need help. So, yes, we're, we're trying to help them out. And the county administrator, uh, Alvin S. Glenn Detention Center reports to the county administrator. It doesn't report to me. I don't have anything to do with it except investigating crimes there. 
Uh, so we've had some talks with the county administrator. He was there. County administrator was there that morning. Uh, the de assistant county administrator was also there. So they got to see firsthand what was occurring and, um, and what needs to be changed. You mentioned these people that were involved in the attack were kind of armed robbers, murderers. Are the people that were in the pod, the rest of the people kind of fit into that category, or is it kind of everyone kind of lumped in there together? That's the worst of the worst. That pod was where most of those that are in for some very serious crimes were, were being held. Yeah, so that, that was a bad pod, and you saw what happened. Thank you all.